everyone. The Chicago Bull music intro doesn't happen unless I have a good round. And because you can't hear it here, it means it was a bad round. Who is this, you ask? His name's Chase Jones. Now, guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw a diagram here. Bear with me. What's this like? Let's make that nice and thick. Okay. So, against Carlton. Chase Jones, best game of his career. How does he play? This is this is a beautiful, beautiful green oval of at the Adelaide Oval. So, Jones starts on the wing, right? This is the wing. And what is his role during the game against Carlton? I mean, after the first two minutes, he was in this pocket. I distinctively remember him being right in this pocket, getting a hand pass. Off to a uh, ranking, sorry, not the back pocket, the uh, forward pocket. But it was a diagonal. It was the opposite side of the ground, right? He was there. What did he do the whole game? He would be running up into defense. I saw him taking marks on the other side of the ground as this wing. He was spreading all over the ground. Now, how did he get 27 touches? Doing this. Doing this. Okay, now we come up against Hawks. A more contested game, not many marks. Here's another beautiful, beautiful Tasmanian oval. Where does Chess Jones start? What is his position? He's on the wing again. Most of the game is played on Shoal's wing. Over here. Still. It's whatever. Because I think Jones will push up into this. He'll push up over there because that's what he did last week. He would come over. He would move around the ground. He would find himself being able to roll, being able to rotate all across the, uh, the ground. But it wasn't the case. What did Jones do against the Hawks? Basically did cardio going up and down laterally like this, the whole game, nothing else. Coming into Adelaide Oval again, who knows, but what is this man? Anyways. Anyways, um, before I reveal my team, I'll just go into round six. So you don't know my trade, so I can hold that off. So I can show everything. Okay, 1978, honestly, um, yeah, not a great score. Could have been worse. Could have been a lot better, you know? I thought my round was off. I was going to have a great round with um, Marcus Bontempelli as my VC. Career high and finally a good captain. But things fell apart. Um, where to start, man? Like, uh, just watching McGrath just only play like two or three quarters of the game is just sad. And Dacos just destroying my ranking as well. So frustrating. He's he's too expensive for me to get to now. I just my philosophy is to not chase these like ridiculously expensive guys unless I don't know, it's like you can get to them without really destroying your team's progress and structure. I can't get to day cost without doing that. Coming up again up against the crows. Does he finally get a tag? It bewilders me to no end how many cheap, un not necessarily cheap, but uncontested possessions that Collingham would want to flow through Dacos with, and he barely gets any attention. It doesn't make any sense to me how professional coaches at the AFL level can watch every single game that's happened this year. Um, obviously, I'm. this comes from salt 
not having Dacos, but he is the most taggable player in the competition because of his role, right? And he doesn't get it. It makes no sense to me. It just boggles my mind. I mean, um, Lucky Jones is the only one that sort of gave him any attention. He's just not the right fit for him. He doesn't have a tank. He can't run with Dacos. It was just... It makes no sense to to just let this guy with his elite kicking run free and get uncontested possessions when it can be shut down. It just blows my mind. I think Knicks will send keys to Dacos this week. Um, I listened to his pregame interview or whatever it was, weekly interview, um, and it seemed clear to me that he was a target Um by the crows like he will get attention um he's just such a key um role player in that collingwood team and like collingwood distinctively want to move the like rotate the ball to find dacos in positions where he can give a really good kick and progress their their forward play um just run with the guy, man. It makes no sense. An AFL standard to let this guy just run rampant. Everyone wants to back in their game plans, but this guy's like the most form player of the comp and is the most taggable. Just drives me nuts. Whatever. Tim English is dominating. Um, I think Laddams is borderline scoring as much as Grundy was when I traded him out. Um, yeah, just a total car crash in the ruck department. It's just, and a lot of it is just not really my fault. Like, Gorn being back after two weeks, three weeks, whatever it was, when I heard Goodwin say he's out for at least a month, like, after his injury, it's just so frustrating, Cameron getting injured, you know, Sheed getting injured also made me, um, like, regret trading Laddams instead of Sheed, you just, ugh, ugh, whatever, it's not even the worst of my worries, because I had two 37s in my team, I mean, that's half of the 13 37s, so I guess there's some, there's some, um, you know, there's a spiritual look at this with 37. It's a great number, but... <laughs> oh. Cosy Piggott dropped, like, three easy contested... Not contested, um, uncontested marks. It would have given him shots on goal, it looked like, during the first half of the Melbourne game. Bizarre. He just lost... He's lost all his form after coming back from that suspension, um... I mean, like, for the first week I traded him in, he kicked, like, two goals, five for an 81. He could have been an easy 120 again, so. Yeah, his break-even's 137 now. Um, so he's obviously going to go down in price unless he pulled something out of the bag against North, which I've looked at his history and, surprisingly, isn't that great. But, yeah, I'll get to trades in a sec. But, you know, everyone had Shizu. Uh, we'll talk about him in a bit, yeah, what else, Taranto's dominating, um, yeah, just some of my defense positions are just really, like, comparatively against most other teams, it's just, like, it's too many points getting, like, lost in the defense at the moment, Jaden Hunt, Scoring a 90 was fantastic. Um, 42 point last quarter. This guy, I wish, just did this the whole game. Um, like he did in the last quarter against Port. Uh, he just runs so much. I just think if he did what he did in the last quarter, it just suits the way the Eagles are now sort of set up with the way they need to like spread the ball because they just don't have the the skills to really play like, contested direct footy um, without just getting hammered. They just got so many injuries, like, last year. I just think Hunt suits that kick mark game that they need to sort of do at the moment. I mean, he showed it in the last quarter. He was, most of the Eagles play was running through him. Um, so, yeah, great score. 
I would love to see him get 100. It'd be very satisfying as a pick. And um, Darcy McPherson, um, he's been um, teetering on the edge of scoring something like this the whole year. You know, like last week, he was on about 90 at three-quarter time and then just disappeared as Frio took over. Um, like I've said before, I picked him ahead of Day and it's suddenly, because Day's had that suspension for two weeks, he's been the better pick and got a lot of slack for this guy coming into my team at the start of the year. But yeah, point proved for this this man. His role was there, I saw it, and he's just he's taking a heap of uh, marks in the um, um, Gold Coast backline, so his role's not going to change. Um, coming up against Richmond this week, I could see him doing 100 again. He's going to have such a low break even. Um, if you were looking at someone below 700k as a forward or defender, he's not the worst pick. Um, having that um, Gold Coast buy He's still a great selection. Excuse me. So, yeah. Yeah, if you were interested in McPherson, um, I don't see anything wrong with him at the moment. He's just, he's he's not looking droppable at all. Like, he's playing really well as well. Uh, and and he's hungry as well. So, he's, he's been a great, great, great pick. Unfortunately, the rest of my team kind of sucks. I'm unfortunate for Took Miller owners as well, by the way. Um. Yeah, Holland's on the bench. There is pretty good. He's generating catch cash. Hopefully, you didn't trade him. Mackenzie's not named this week, so perhaps he is um someone you got to look at trading out. Um. Yeah, coming into um the week, I had switched in and out of holding or trading Pickett for Chandler as well, like a lot, and it was only maybe the last hour I firmed up on. Chandler just as more as a philosophy thing you know like trading out a rookie and holding a guy that you would think could be mid price at a premium for a couple of weeks against bad opposition but ugh oy, oy, oy. I'm surprised Chandler actually gained cash this week on online sources it said he break even was 65 or something but it is what it is, man. Brody Grundy saved his score <laughs> to get to a fifty-four in the second half when um he took most of the rocking. Um, he can't play forward, Goodwin. He's not a forward. He can only play in the ruck. Otherwise, don't have him in the team, man. He's he's not a forward. He has to play all of his game in the ruck to be like influential. It's just. It's starting to look like, um, yeah, the Gordon Grundy thing can't really work unless Gorn's like the Luke Jackson role of last year. You know, Gorn has to play more forward or like rotating around the ground for these guys to work. Um, and, and my theory was with Grundy just to actually trade him to Gorn once Gorn was back, but um, so. Whenever I decide to trade Grundy out now, um, I can't. I just don't want to do it this week because I need to just progress my team in different areas. Um, even though he's going to be losing cash, Gorn is also losing more cash, so I can always just straight swap until there's a massive game from Gorn or his break even gets to a respectable number. So I'll just look at doing that switch when it comes in. So yeah, um, Cowan's another out this week. Heading into round seven, I have done my trades. As you can see, Mr. Day is there. Um, I was thinking about bringing in Chera ahead of Day, but I've decided to keep it keep it on um, a straighter bat and shoring up my defense a bit more. Um, I was looking at Chera the past couple of weeks. I like how he's been playing. He's... um. Obviously had a massive game against Saints, but he's been scoring these like 40-point quarters and then just like not being involved for a, for the next quarter and getting like a five. And I just think once he finds some consistency in his um, games this year, 
um, he can explode like he did, despite most of Carlton really being inflated by the St. Kilda game plan. Um, I think he can be a 105 plus guy at the at the least, to be honest, if he finds some form. Um, I just his um matchups over the next month aren't actually that great. So um, besides West Coast and who knows, you know, maybe he doesn't actually do that well despite coming up against the Eagles this week. Um, yeah, just super cheap. Um, can definitely match it with the um midfield guys, the big midfield guys. I reckon this year. Um, so he's one I'm looking at, and also in that price range over the next few weeks. It's Jai Simpkin, considering he's back this week, and uh, yeah, scoring that 48, that was in one quarter against the Lions this, um, a couple of weeks ago, so he's going to drop a lot more in cash. He's definitely one to look at um, once his break-even is manageable. Um, another guy in this sort of 700k range is McCluggage. He is the second lowest, second highest price crash this year. Um, and he's a he's a, a plus 100 guy, you would think, even with Dunkley in the team. Um, he's getting like 30% CBAs at the moment. Um, you just want to see a bit, like 40% probably, and more consistent use out of the middle from McCluggage um, before jumping on. But he is basically bottomed out here, coming up against Frio. He probably goes above 100 for the first time this year, I think. Yeah, those are three guys that I'm very interested in from the lower price bracket in the midfield. Um, but I'm also very keen on just running the gauntlet here with Fiorini with um, Miller out. Just another guy with the Gold Coast Geelong um, buy that is... Just super important to have players in um, because you can trade, I guess, with the Suns. Maybe Fiorini might end up being a keeper, but if coming into round el uh, 11, I think the Gold Coast Geelong buy is, we could trade Fiorini and McPherson out and have two upgrades um, coming into that week. It's just super important to have guys that you can trade out or having that buy because it's only two teams. But yeah, um, I really like Fiorini. Just, I'm happy to gamble on him. He's just a huge scorer when, when he has the role. Um, yeah, I just want to have, I, I, I want to have fun with some of my, my picks, man. I like having Gold Coast players. It's fun to watch them when you're invested. Um, I got Butters as the VC this week. I'm captain currently on Anderson because his career high before last, the last couple of weeks when he got that 150 was against Richmond. But um, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, yeah, we're um, we're looking all right price progression wise. Team value is getting up there really well. Overall ranking is a bit sad, but um, happy where my team is at in terms of progression, you know. Just unfortunate some of the picks that I've uh, done that have let me down. Just wondering for trade targets that anyone else is interested in. <clears throat> Might just um Might go through teams, so bear with me. I'll just bring up teams in a sec. We'll bring up Paint again. Just admire Jonesy for a bit. Um, we'll just see if there was anything I missed from teams. Anyone interested? Port versus Saints. Should be a good game. I would tip Port if uh, they're at home, but it's not, so I'd be going Saints under the roof. Nothing of interest. Um... Ins and outs wise, but uh, Brad Crouch sort of fell down a bit with Steel maybe influencing that. Uh, it's hard to know. Um, I'd be backing in Butters, Rosie, 
um, to have massive scores considering how Carlton went this week, which is why I'm biased captaining um, Butters. Um, if there was someone to get attention, it would be Rosie from a Frio player, but I don't know if they would really put any effort into that. It would not surprise me, though, if he got some attention. Wagner omitted is bad for uh, anyone that brought him in. Um, hard to see him coming back quickly. He just didn't really have um, a huge influence with his skills. Which is, they weren't great. Um, Will Brody was another one I missed. If he can find some form, he's below 700k now. 137 break even. He could bottom out at like 650. There's a lot of these midfield guys that, if you're looking for value targets, could match those really high price guys. Maybe not Oliver. <clears throat> but I haven't really seen. And Walsh, yeah. I don't really see there being much of a difference between some of these guys. Laird, Laird Oliver, Steele, Merritt, maybe. Yeah, Merritt. All of these guys, I'd look to getting in at the second half of the year once your team's finished, you know, like having a Simpkin um, for a bit until his buy, maybe, you know, I get him next week, and then trading him into one of those bigger guys. Just getting all those duds off the field more than getting the million dollar boys, you know? Um, yeah, I've appropriately positioned my team. I'll get to team the rest of the teams in a sec. I've appropriately positioned my players where I see them, um, you know, mentally. Um, I got McPherson at D1 because he deserves it. It's not He's not the highest price guy, but he deserves to be there, you know. And I've got Day secondary in the second spot there because, you know, he's shown consistency and I respect him as a player so he can get that D2 spot. Hunt's been promoted to D3. Johannesson had a great game, I think, but didn't really score fantasy-wise, so I'm happy with him as a player still. Jonesy is on the watch. I'm going to have a little bit more belief in him than McKenna. But these guys, and Pickett, you can see he's F6 here. They're on watch, man. They are on watch. Once I get those three guys off my field, I'm flying, you know? Um... Lions, Frio, so Wagner out, not much of interest there. Brayshaw's been dealing with some injury issues. Um, I think I said that last week. And it should have shown. It sort of showed this week again. And he's being talked about maybe missing, but it looks like he'll play. He just looks a bit underdone, you know, carrying an injury. So his scoring is also showing that. Tom Green back for the Giants. Probably. Hmm, kicks Cornelio scoring a little bit. Um, Perryman's not going to get as many center balances. I don't know. He's an interesting watch maybe this week. Perryman wouldn't be too interested, but you know. It is what it is. Nothing of interest besides Roberts. Unfortunate for anyone that traded him in. He was a pretty simple target. Just got unlucky with Duncan landing on his leg. Unfortunate. Bailey Smith is back in. He should have a big game with Liberatory out. That should hopefully help McRae and Smith, I guess. Hopefully McRae benefits a lot from Liberatory being out, but Smith back in is a bit, yeah. How you going? McKenzie dropped. If he's sub, you definitely want to be trading him. He will be someone I have to adjust with if he is sub. I'm hoping he's not because McDonald is named as the emergencies and he's been really good for Hawks, so I'm surprised at that. Um, so yeah, Daybacks there. Um, Seamus Mitchell keeps his spot. Seamus, good old Seamus, beast mode. Simkin back in. Didn't realize LDU was out. Oh, that's an alarm. Unfortunate. I'm lucky. Will Phillips is out as well. Simkin's actually going to get a lot of Attendance there now. That's fascinating. Darcy Tucker named on the ball. Hmm. Powell should also benefit from that. I wonder how long LDU is out for. That's an interesting one. 
Nothing of interest with the Eagles. Saad Doherty is back somehow. Crazy. See, this meniscus tear that people have been talking about is bizarre. Um, they're having bizarre return dates. It's like they say they're out for a month, six to eight weeks, and then they're back in two, three. Like, what is going on? Come on. Be honest, man. It's not fair. That Kennedy dropped is bizarre. He's a good player. Didn't really watch Carlton. Must have sucked. Um, a lot of ins for Essendon, but these are the extended teams. Apple managed, yeah, he was terrible. Guthrie, not much of interest there in that game. Not much of interest in the Richmond game. I don't know who this Bauer guy is, but... Where's he name? Bench, yeah. Doubt he plays, who knows. Um... Yeah, so there should be an uptick in Gold Coast Suns players. Humphrey named in the center there is interesting. Um, yeah, it is a bit risky picking Fiorini like I am because maybe he's not the guy that benefits the most. Seeing Humphrey there in the center, does that say something? Who knows? I would assume Fiorini and Swallow are the guys that get an uptick. Um, with uh, Miller out, but... Humphrey's an interesting one. He might be one to watch this week just to see what his role is with Miller out of the side. He's um, a good scorer um, from what I understand. So yeah, that's an interesting one. And there is news with Laird possibly being out. So you just got to watch for that one, everyone. Make sure you're adjusting if necessary. Be fascinating to see who comes in if that is the case. Um, Yeah, that looks like it. Adam's back. I think that's it, guys. If you're still watching, let me know if there's anything you want me to ask. Like, if you have a question, ask me, my guys. I don't mind replying. Have fun this week. Goodbye.